Well, hi everyone. Well, we have another T1 steel bridge issue, this time in California. I'm gonna go through what's going on with this bridge and go back and cover some history as to what the issue is with this type of steel. It was manufactured for bridges in the late 50s, 60s, 70s. By 77, I think it was largely discontinued. And uh, it's interesting now that this is causing a lot of problems, at least uh, in terms of traffic impacts while these bridges are inspected. And then if cracks are discovered that have to be repaired, then you're looking at either uh, bridge closures or lane reduction and weight restrictions, that sort of thing. So we have an announcement here from June 27th, 2024 from the County of Placer County, just northeast of Sacramento. The Forest Hill Bridge will soon undergo ultrasonic testing of 282 weld points as part of a national effort to provide preventative maintenance and quality assurance to bridges built with a similar type of steel. Placer County Board of Supervisors took action Tuesday to approve a combined $6.3 million in contracts, funded 80% with federal funds from the Federal Highway Bridge Program, and 20% by California's SB1 Road Maintenance and Rehabilitation Account funds. So what you have is structural steel members uh, for, used for the bridge girders, main supports for the bridge, the superstructure, and you have what's called hydrogen embrittlement. And I'll just read this definition here out of wiki. Hydrogen embrittlement, HE, also known as hydrogen-assisted cracking or hydrogen-induced cracking, is a reduction in the ductility of a metal due to absorbed hydrogen. Hydrogen atoms are small and can permeate solid metals. Once absorbed, hydrogen lowers the stress required for cracks in the metal to initiate and propagate, resulting in embrittlement. So a lot of these cracks, if not all of them, started at the time of construction welding for these girders, and then over time, in some cases, opened up due to cyclic loading of repeated vehicle passes, thousands per day, day in and day out for decades. Now, I recently did a few videos about US 50 over the Blue Mesa Reservoir in Colorado. That bridge had an emergency closure. They've since initiated repairs, and this was the issue. Under these FHWA mandated inspections, they discovered a crack in the girder related to this uh, hydrogen embrittlement uh, at the weld. So then they had to look at the rest of the bridge welds in great detail, which took weeks and weeks, and in parallel developed a repair plan using these steel plates bolted into place over the existing structural steel members. Now, just to give you a quick update, as of just a couple of days ago, the, I'm recording this video on September 5th, 2024, they've opened up US 50 Middle Bridge to pretty much all vehicle traffic. There are exclusions so that Class A motorhomes, larger Class C motorhomes, semi-trucks, commercial buses, uh, pickup trucks with a gooseneck trailer or a fifth wheel camper or trailer have to take a detour. They anticipate, they being Colorado DOT, that this bridge will be fully reopened to normal traffic by sometime late this fall. They also have a bridge immediately to the west made of the same T1 steel. These bridges were constructed in 1963. And so that Lake Fort Bridge is currently undergoing rigorous non-destructive testing to evaluate the welds. Now I want to go over the history of what led to the recognition of these issues. The first known example of this type of weld cracking occurred for the I-64 Sherman Minton Bridge over the Ohio River between Louisville, Kentucky and New Albany, Indiana. It's a double-decker bridge. Lower deck was completed in 1961 and the upper deck was completed a year later. The bridge was closed September 9th, 2011 due to the discovery of cracked welds which they later determined dated back to the original construction, but went undiscovered for nearly 50 years. Next, we have the Hernando de Soto Bridge, I-40 over the Mississippi River. This bridge was completed in 1973. On May 11, 2021, an inspection revealed a cracked girder. The bridge was closed to all traffic, and no river traffic was allowed to pass under the bridge for a period of three days, which... If yeah, I'm sure you all know the Mississippi River is a major shipping corridor for barges and other traffic, and that had a huge economic impact. And more recently, we have the Jennings Randolph Bridge, which carries US 30 over the Ohio River between Chester, West Virginia, and East Liverpool, Ohio. 
The bridge was built in 1977, again of T1 steel. The bridge was closed December 11th, 2023 due to two cracks in welds between structural members being discovered. So this brings us back to this bridge in Auburn, California, Placer County. This is the Forest Hill Bridge. Spectacular bridge. You may know it from one of the early, if not the first Fast and Furious movies where he drives a, I guess a C6 convertible Corvette off the bridge and parachutes out of the vehicle. So this bridge was completed in 1973 by the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation and among the 70 highest in the world. So the reason it was constructed so high is back in the 60s, the construction of a concrete arch dam, Auburn Dam, was authorized. And due to a combination of circumstances, including an earthquake in 1975, the whole project was rethought. There were a lot of geotechnical engineers and engineering geologists who came out and said, hey, this dam would not survive a moderate to large earthquake based on its current designs. And then a year later, Teton Dam failed, which was another U.S. Bureau of Reclamation project, which really gave that organization a black eye, to say the least. So also there had been some opposition against this dam by various groups from almost day one. So it just it just stalled out it's it's likely to never be built it was going to be one of the key features of the central valley water project and then as the city of sacramento found out in the 1980s they could probably use the additional flood storage benefit the uh, levees were nearly overtopped in the city of sacramento in 1986. i moved to sacramento at the end of 1988 to work for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Sacramento District just because their whole flood control program became reinvigorated because of that flooding. Uh, I'd previously worked in Omaha District and all those major projects were completed in the early 60s. So I used to joke we were like the Maytag repairman in that district where nothing exciting happened for long stretches of time. And then the only time we got to really do anything was when there was some type of problem that was unanticipated. So Sacramento had a lot of new design work on the book, so that's why I went out there. Now, I previously had done research that indicated that this T1 steel was made by U.S. steel, but in the Wikipedia entry for this bridge, it said that the bridge was fabricated by Kawasaki Heavy Industries in Japan. So let's look at a few other stats here. Total length of the bridge is a little over 2,400 feet. The longest span is 862 feet. It says daily traffic volume is low. It's about 20,000 vehicles per day. So not a huge amount of traffic, but it's an important roadway in the area. State of California completed a seismic retrofit project in January 2011 that was completed in 2015 that uh, cost nearly $75 million. And the original bridge construction cost was less than $13 million. I don't think that was adjusted for inflation, but still, even so, the retrofit cost more than the original construction. So as a result of the discovery of the problems with these bridges made of T1 steel, Federal Highways Administration issued guidance as to what would be required for performing non-destructive testing to evaluate the other welds at these bridges. And this evaluation is very rigorous, very hands-on, and is far more involved in a routine or even special inspection of a bridge. So there are different nomenclatures for this steel, ASTM A514 or T1 grade 100 steel. So what the feds were saying is that these bridges need to be inspected with ultrasonic weld tests. And what we're talking about is the butt welds between members of these structural steel girders. And all this inspection work was to be completed by March 31st, 2024, and we know many states did not meet that deadline. So according to the FHWA, as of a few years ago, there were a total of 20 states that had T1 steel, 64 bridges with steel at the butt welds, and then 16 states have bridges which will require non-destructive testing by March 31st, 2021. So state of California is in the process of doing their weld inspections. This 262 welds, you see they have to use these specialized cranes, these snooper cranes to get access. This is the ultrasonic test across the welds. They have to grind the paint off first. It's a very laborious process. 
And of course they have to close lanes in order to do this work. As I mentioned earlier, the cost associated with this non-destructive testing of these welds is going to run in excess of $6.3 million and is expected to take six to nine months. So there'll be extended traffic impacts. And of course, the other question is if they discover any cracks, they're in, then they're into a whole new realm of coming up with a remediation plan, probably fabricating these type of cover plates that can be bolted into place. That's down the road, but a lot of these bridges that have had this rigorous non-destructive testing of the welds has uncovered one or more cracked welds. I don't know how this is gonna turn out here, but uh, it'll, it'll be interesting to see. So I'll continue to follow this story. There's likely to be new developments in the coming weeks and months. I wanna send out a shout out to the channel members. I really appreciate your ongoing support, as well as those of you who provided super thanks. That's another great way to support the channel. Uh, please consider becoming a member. I'm really upping my game as it were in, in production, using more drone footage, getting more public information requests out there. I'm digging deep on these stories, information that you're gonna get well beyond what you could get in uh, mass media sources, particularly as I'm an engineer. I, I have a, a background and curiosity that enables me to kind of dig into these details. If you have any information on one of these stories that I've covered, or have a suggestion for a future video topic, please email me at info at ftnc.com and please stay tuned for future videos.